Hey everybody, welcome back to the wood shop. In this video, we're not going to be making anything out of wood. In our last video, we unboxed our new Craftsman planer and we really love it. However, when we were reading the instructions and setting it up, it expressly said, do not hook a shop vac up to the planer. We didn't follow the instructions. Now sadly, our shop vac has bit the dust. Let us have a moment of silence for our hardworking 10 gallon friend. Well, that sucks. At least it used to. Now we did go out and pick up a new shop vac. We did like that particular model, so we got the same exact one, the 10 gallon, four and a half horsepower. And this time we're gonna protect our investment. As you can see here, we picked up several different uh, parts from our local hardware store, and we are going to attempt to make our own dust separator. Now we've watched other videos of folks on YouTube making their own dust separation systems. Now I've combined some of their ideas with some of my own, and we're going to see what we can come up with. Let's get to work. All right, we're starting out with two buckets here. Now, one bucket will actually be to collect the sawdust. The other bucket will actually be the separator itself. All the pipes and everything will be housed in this bucket, and it will create the cyclone to spin down the dust into this one. So the first thing I've got to do is start by clipping the handle off of the separator bucket. We'll leave the handle on this one for carrying the dust. Okay, I watched two different setups for this. I've seen several people take the two buckets and actually put clamps here and clamp them together. But I did see another video of a guy that actually cut this top lip off the bucket and made them to where one would fit inside the other, which is, I actually like that better. So I'm going to try to do that method. Okay, so I think I can take a pair of tin snips and cut down and go along this, this little lip right here. I want to leave that lip on to help give more of a friction fit when I set this bucket into the other. So we'll see how this works out. complete on this. We whittled around and around and around and around until we got this at the angle we wanted so it will fit into the other bucket and it's really tight. All right, now I'm down in the floor so I can show you these actually fitting together. They fit together really good and snug so you shouldn't lose any suction with that. Now that we know that our body is going to fit together for this dust separator, let's talk about some of the parts that we purchased to finish up this project. We have a piece here of 2 inch Schedule 40 PVC. We also have some elbows here. One's a 90 degree and one is a 60 degree. This will help when the dust comes in from the tool to help uh, give it that cyclone effect. And we also have a couple of parts here. They're drain and trap connectors. They're both one and a half by two inch. Um, one's just a little bit thicker than the other. Um, you, can, you can see on this schedule 40 here, it'll just snap right in there. And we also have a cup. So um, let's go ahead and drill some holes in the top of this bucket and we'll show you how everything fits together. Next, we're gonna mark the holes 
for our pipes to enter the top, both pipes are going to enter the top of the separator, the entrance and the exit. Now this one will mark just a little bit from the edge and we'll find the lowest spot. The bottoms of these buckets are kind of wavy, so we'll find a low spot where it'll set pretty flush. And I'll mark the inside of this coupler since that's the same size of the outside of the pipe. And probably a quarter of an inch from the outside, a blue marker on a blue bucket that's <laughs> a little bit odd. That's all we've got right now. Now it just so happens that this little ring on the bottom is uh, two inches wide, so we'll just cut on the inside of that a little bit and we don't have to mark that. All right, now that the holes are marked and ready to go, I'm going to drill a starter hole right in the center of each one of these marks. That way we can get our tin snips or knife or whatever we cut the hole with in there. All right, we'll move over here to the floor so we can get more leverage with the knife. I tried getting tin snips in that hole and they won't fit. Now you got to watch out about getting these holes too big. We want them just a little bit smaller than the pipe so it'll be a tight friction fit. So we'll go, this circle right here is two inches. So we'll come inside of that just a little bit and these holes have to be as perfect as you can get them around. So I'll start on the inside and make a hole first and then we'll trim it up the last thing. Well, now our bucket has two holes in the bottom of it. What do you do with a bucket with holes in it? You make a dust separator. Well, we're down to the part where we start measuring pipe. Now, the center hole will be the suction side. And these sections of pipe are only going to be long enough pretty much to fit inside of each connection and whatever's left in between there. I mean, there's, this is not going to stick down in here only the length whatever this is that's all will be inside the bucket so we'll figure out how much we need we'll shove that on there as far as it will go now this will be on top of it so we will need seven eighths of an inch of pipe from this coupler down Well, now that our vacuum port is all ready, we've got to make our connection that goes from the uh, separator to the tool we're using. For that, we're going to be using this boy right here and a 90 degree elbow. This will come in right under it, so we need a section of pipe that will just fit inside this and inside this with no extra room, so it'll be tight just like this one. You get a snug fit between the two joints. That way you've got no leak in your vacuum. So we'll go ahead and measure this. Okay, so this is an inch and three quarters deep. This is three quarters of an inch deep. We need two and a half inches of pipe.
All right, so as of right now, I'm looking inside the bucket. You've got the suction port here. This will be where the uh, dust comes in. Now, I went ahead and cut a, a little piece of pipe here that we will connect to that 90 to a 60 degree elbow. And this will be kind of offset, pointing downward just a tad. That way you can start your dust on a downward spiral. These notches, if you line them up perfect, that puts it straight. So what we'll do is line them up maybe a quarter of an inch off. That way the, uh, the dust will start on its cyclone toward the bottom. So we'll go ahead and put those together. Well, there's what you have. The vacuum port, the dust inlet port. It's pointing uh, on about maybe a 10 or 15 degree angle toward the bottom. That way you get this cyclone action that drives the dust into the collection bucket and not right back up through the vacuum hose into your shop vac. Okay, I think we're ready to put these together. Now, for the intake hose for the dust, the hose that will actually hook to the tools, we are going to use the hose from our old shop vac and put in here. All right, as you can see, this is our nice new shiny shop vac, and over here is our dead shop vac, and we have, um, some sawdust in there that we're going to try to suck up into our new dust separator. I want to show you the inside of our new shop vac just to show you it is super clean. Shouldn't be any dust in here. As you can see, it looks good. Ooh, look at that filter. That looks nice. All right. Let's put that together. We're going to take our suction hose. We're going to put it in our suction port of the dust separator. There we go. And this is the old hose from the old shop vac. That's what we're going to use to suck up all of this dust. Check that out. All right. Let's take it for a spin, shall we? do you see here that we've sucked up all of that dust let's take a look inside the new shop back and see what happened there's just a little little bit of fine sawdust very fine um, now let's go take a look inside the separator Check that out. That is great. Well, there you have it. This is our version of a dust separator made out of two five gallon buckets and some PVC pipe and connectors. It's really a great addition to this shop. It's going to give us much longer life out of the new shop back, and we think it works great. We've actually used our old shop back hose here. The way I have this set up is so that it should never have to be taken off of the separator. And you can hook and unhook your shop back hose anytime you want just by sticking it in here and pulling it out. 
If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave us a comment below. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Don't miss an episode of Wood Songs by Russell. Thanks so much for joining us today. Happy woodworking!